everybody, I'm Jenny Smith. Now you may never have thought about using classroom setup to help manage a cell phone problem before, but I'm here to tell you it can work. And you can use setup to either reduce or even increase student discussion. So try some of these ideas, you're going to be shocked. Now in this video I'll talk first about what questions to ask about classroom setup, and then I'll cover the four main gospel classroom setups, which are ladder, U-shape or rainbow, gauntlet, and boardroom, and we'll talk about the pros and cons of each and which is better for which type of classroom activity and especially which ones affect cell phone use. Now there are a few considerations with regard to classroom setup that you should think about when determining how to use your classroom space. How does this setup support the activities we're doing today? How does this setup influence the behavior of students? How does this setup influence the behavior of instructors? What is largest in the student's field of view? What barriers can be removed to improve classroom dynamics? So first, how does the setup support the activities we're doing today? I'm going to show a couple of classroom um, photographs while we're discussing these topics so you can think about these questions as, we're, as I'm discussing them. If you're having a lesson that is primary le primarily lecture, are students facing the teacher or are they facing each other? If you want to encourage classroom discussion, are the students looking at each other or the teacher? Will the class be primarily writing? Are they watching a movie, writing on the board? How can I change the classroom setup to support these activities? Now, how does your classroom setup behave, influence the behavior of students? Do students feel like they can hide because there's so many barriers between them and the teacher or a long distance between you and the, te between the teacher and the students? Is it hot or cold in your classroom? Are the seats hard or soft? Are you, are you seated on a couch? Do any of your students have special needs? Do you have an ADD or autistic student? And are you asking them to sit closer so that they have less visual distraction in their field of view? Are students hard of hearing or visually impaired? Might they be left-handed, tall, short? Find ways to help, teacher, to help students be comfortable. Now, how does this setup influence the behavior of instructors? Can the instructor see faces? Can the teacher walk around? Can the teacher easily access students for nonverbal correction? Is the teacher cut off from students because of barriers? What is largest in the student's field of view? What do students see first when they look up? How large is the TV or the board or the teacher or another student in the field of view of students who are seated on the back row, in the middle, or in the front. What barriers can be removed to improve classroom dynamics? Now it's very easy to think about bringing in equipment like a TV or computer, um, a projector screen, MP3 and speakers, chairs. But what teachers sometimes forget is how very much in our classrooms is unnecessary and can distract from learning. If it's not needed, put it away. If there's no writing, put away your tables. If there's going to be physical activity or you're just watching a video, then do you really need the tables? Don't stand behind a table or a podium. You may feel safer hiding back there, but if you're afraid of students, they'll pick up on it and eat you alive. <laughs> Removing the barrier of the podium is a simple thing you can do tomorrow to become a champion teacher. Try not to sit down unless you're unwell or have another physical need to be seated while you're teaching. Now let's switch gears and talk about table setup and the effects on cell phone use and some method methods that you can use to mitigate misuse during your lessons. Now many teachers never even think about how classroom setup can affect outcomes, but it can. Teenagers crave novelty. It's a key part of how their brains develop. Changing up the classroom setup is a simple way you can help make the classroom seem new and stimulate their minds, helping them engage with your lessons. So let's talk about the four major types of classroom setup that are mainly used in LDS gospel classrooms. Now let's talk about ladder or broken ladder. This is the typical LDS setup. It's most common in the LDS seminary classrooms that I've visited throughout the United States. Now this Relief Society room is in a ladder setup where the seats are set up in straight rows perpendicular to the teacher. A typical LDS chapel is a broken ladder as the ladder is broken up so that there are aisles between the seats or between the rungs of the ladder. 
So what activities is ladder good for? Ladder or broken ladder is great for lessons that are primarily lecture. It is not so great for video watching, group games, or group discussion. Now, this may be what you want, but if you're trying to encourage students to comment more, try changing from ladder to another setup like rainbow. How does ladder affect student behavior? Well, it discourages group discussion because students cannot see one another's faces. This is especially so if spaces are very far apart. It can be very distracting for ADD or autistic students because of how very much is occurring within the student's field of view. Students can hide misbehaviors easily in this setup because of the physical distance between the student and the teacher. How does it affect teacher behavior? Well, in a ladder setup, a teacher can walk around somewhat, but I find that most don't. Teachers in this setup have many sets of eyes focused right on them, which they may find intimidating, and so they hide behind the table or the podium. What about student field of view and barriers? Well, students in the back only see the backs of other students' heads, and the backs of other students' heads are disproportionate in their field of view. The teacher or the TV or the board is very small in the field of view for students who are seated in the back row. Now look at these teachers to see how small and insignificant the teacher is. Although this is a setup that is intended to put the focus on the teacher, students in the back rows must look past many desks, many heads, including whatever all those people are doing, which may include gaming or texting or Snapchatting, in order to see the teacher on the board. This setup ends up actually discouraging discussion and encouraging cell phone misuse because students know that the teachers just can't see them and the teacher isn't the focus of their field of view. Now you can alleviate some of these problems by circulating often or walking around the classroom. You can also station your co-teacher at the back of the class so that he or she is watching students from behind. But even the co-teacher is going to struggle with seeing what's happening in the middle row in a ladder or broken ladder setup. All right, next let's talk about the U-shaped classroom setup, rainbow or even double rainbow or double U. What activities is this setup good for? Well, it's very good for video viewing, it's good for board work, it's good for small group games, it's good for pair games, it's good for writing activities. For me, this is my favorite all-purpose setup. In fact, this is actually a picture of my classroom from when I taught seminary. How does U or rainbow affect student behavior? Well, it increases group discussion because students can see each other's faces. They're much closer together, which also encourages discussion. It also makes cell phones less tempting. I have found when I'm using this setup that students correct each other. Especially older girls who are seated <laughs> I have found that students often correct each other in this setup. They're looking at each other and a girl will give a uh, young man or a younger girl who's made a rude or inappropriate comment a dirty look, which stops the bad behavior before I even have to intervene. So, so peer pressure actually ends up playing in your favor um, during a youth setup, or at least I've found that to be the case. Everyone is seated very close to everyone. And the close proximity of this teacher also discourages cell phone misuse. So how are teachers behaving in a U setup? Well, proximity is your friend with a U-shaped setup. Proximity is what it's called when you approach a student who is misbehaving and stand near them while continuing whatever you're teaching or doing until they stop the unwanted behavior. Sometimes you may use a nonverbal cue like tapping, tapping on someone's phone or um, or on a, someone's shoulder to remind them to put a phone down. In you, it takes just a step or two or, to approach a student without being too intimidating, and you can stop unwanted behaviors without saying a single word. How about the field of view and barriers? Well, as you can see, you, even with the table set up, has fewer barriers between the teacher and the student. The teacher is always a barrier when using the board, but the close proximity of students to the board can help alleviate some of that. Remove the teacher table or put it to the side to remove another barrier, 
consider moving your U very close to the board. Once you've moved the teacher table or put it to the side, you have just one barrier between you and the students, just as in this setup. So there are some variations for U and Rainbow. You can alter Rainbow into a steep V shape. This is better for group discussion because students can see one another's faces better. It's good for seated games in a small group, groups of about five to seven students. Steep V is only neutral for video watching because students can see each other's faces and may lose focus on the video. But if you're in a crowded space and you need to squish students up, this is a good alternative. It's not, it's not a negative, certainly, but it's a good alternative, especially if you remove the tables. There's also no desk rainbow. This is the most common setup in Sunday school, young women, young men's classes. This is better for group, small group discussion. It's best for well-behaved groups because it's almost impossible for the teacher to circulate around the classroom, which means it's almost impossible to use proximity to cause a student to stop misuse just by your approach without coming off as way too physically intimidating. You'll need to use verbal and nonverbal coaching to help students put cell phones away when you're using a no desk rainbow situation, which may also cause extra distraction during class. If your class is already recalcitrant regarding cell phones, I'd recommend Tiny Boardroom as a method for retraining them to, to better behaviors. Pay attention to the windows that are in the doors. Try to put students facing away from doors and windows whenever possible. Trash cans and tables are super obnoxious in smaller church classrooms. But listen, you can always put the table in the hall when you teach. They will not take away your Temple recommend. I'm speaking from experience here. I've also used a table as a blocker to prevent students from sitting too far away from me, especially when I was teaching a class of students who were a little bit um, rambunctious. One more variation is the double U or double rainbow setup. This is when you put one set of U-shaped tables or a row of U-shaped seats together with a smaller rainbow or set of U-shaped tables inside, just like in this picture. Now you'll find that the problems and situations uh, with this classroom setup end up being a lot like combining ladder and U. You'll get better classroom discussion because students can see each other slightly better, but you're gonna find a little more misbehavior be on students in the back row because they feel distanced from the instructor when he or she is at the front of the class. Now one big advantage of this group organization is that because of the rainbow configuration, you can walk around behind and in front of students using the little pathways within your rainbow. That will help you gain proximity and can help you maintain and control or manage a cell phone situation in your classroom. This picture shows a classroom that has a very awkward, long, narrow space. It, these types of these shapes of classroom are especially difficult to teach in but you may find that gauntlet can help in this type of space and discourage cell phone misuse now here's a lego classroom that i set up to demonstrate gauntlet and it is super classy and a high-tech video that i took down in my basement <laughs> it's i'm filming this during the pandemic so i couldn't go anywhere to take any better pictures but you'll get the idea from these images what activities are good with a gauntlet setup? Well, gauntlet encourages group, small group discussion with students who are seated on either side or seated across from each other. It's fantastic for writing activities. It's excellent for discouraging cell phone misuse because of teacher proximity. Now, in order for this to work, the teacher must walk up and down the gauntlet. The co-teacher can circulate behind the group. So you, you win from from someone standing over your shoulder and someone being right in front of you. Gauntlet is not good for le lessons that are primary lecture. It's not great for watching videos, it's not great for board work, and it's not great for full group discussion. Gauntlet is better for small groups and pair work. All right, how does gauntlet affect student behavior? Well, it may increase crosstalk, but you can physically put yourself in between the talkers to stop unwanted crosstalking. And here's a tip. If you have two students who don't get along or who are talking too much, place the students you need to separate, separate on opposite ends of the same row to keep them from seeing each other or communicating too easily. Gauntlet and teacher behavior. Well, 
The teacher can walk around very easily and use proximity to stop in fractions. The teacher can easily and quickly view student work to offer assistance. But again, you must be willing to walk through the gauntlet in order for this to work. All right, how does it affect field of view and barriers? Well, the field of view is other students, which is why this is so great for discussion, especially when you want to take focus off the teacher and put it on other classmates. It's not great for video watching, as I mentioned earlier, and it's not amazing for board work. Now, if you want to watch a video or work on the board, you can more move the board behind the group and have one set of students turn around and face the board or the television. Um, but if you do that, you're back in ladder position and have all those weaknesses. So um, it's, still a good, it's still a good setup for those, but just be aware that um, if you switch gauntlet around and turn people's seats, that you're back in ladder and have those limitations of barriers, especially for students in the back row. Now, if you need to use the desk, just like my little Lego people, put it at the end. I show it here opposite the chalkboard so that the teacher can walk back and forth between the desk and the chalkboard naturally and keep and make that just a part of how teacher behavior occurs during the classroom. It's natural. The teacher's not walking through the middle to scold or get on to you. It's just something that happens during the course of a during the course of a lesson. All right, and here's boardroom. Now, this a, a lot of seminary teachers find themselves needing to use the high council room. Boardroom is a professional setup sort of like a like you might find in an office situation where there's a large table in the center of the room with everyone seated around it, sort of facing each other. All right, what activities is boardroom good for? Boardroom is average for group discussion. It's very poor for videos or board work. It's good for small group work and writing activities, and it does have a professional feel. It can help students feel more comfortable when they get into the workforce. All right, how does boardroom affect student behavior? Well, it's very difficult for some students to see the instructor. Half of the classroom is blocked at all times if you are on the long side of the table and the student and only the students seated closest to you have an unobstructed view if you are on the short end of the table. If you aren't circulating, this setup can allow for a great deal of student misuse of cell phones because you just can't get to students conveniently. How about teachers? Well, it's difficult to circulate in a boardroom situation. I really hate circulating with a large boardroom table because I think it's creepy to loom over the back of students. All right, how about field of view and barriers? Well, boardroom supposedly facilitates discussion. The focus is off the instructor and on other students but the barrier of the table may actually discourage discussion because students will actually be several feet away from others with a giant table between them that's probably stacked with, uh, with books and scriptures and cell phones and other items. Now, it can be great for individual games like puzzles or Play-Doh, but it's not very good for group games. It can deter some un unwanted cell phone use if the instructor circulates or if the instructor has everyone put their cell phones on the table face up or face down. Now this is a setup I call tiny boardroom. This is a setup I use most often when teaching Sunday school or young women, especially when I know a particular class has had a reputation for cell phone or device misuse. I squish the kids together around one of the standard classroom tables and I have them stack their phones on that table. I always have an activity or many activities that use students' hands. We draw pictures, we write, we, we build things with blocks, we use buzzer style games. This justifies the crowding and the use of the table. Um, you don't ever wanna fight with students and, and about cell phones just for the sake of fighting, right? Give them a real lesson related reason that they need to put their devices down especially if you're already having trouble with them. This is also not a good setup if a student, this is not a good setup if a student has a social anxiety issue or claustrophobia or something like that. So consider that if you're going to try to use tiny boardroom. The tiny boardroom is great for group and hands-on activities. It might be good for an object lesson. It's not at all good for lecture. It's terrible for video viewing and board work. 
It's very good for retraining classes that have been misusing devices for some time, as long as you have lots of group learning activities that actually need the table. Students are just not going to go for this setup if they catch on that you're doing it to control cell phone use. You need a real lesson related reason. All right, student behavior. It virtually eliminates unwanted cell phone use. The focus is on other students. How about teachers? It's very, very easy to circulate in a boardroom situation, even though you're in a tiny boardroom situation. Now, even though you're looming over students, um, I, have, I feel more comfortable with this setup than I do the boardroom setup for some reason. I'm, I'm not sure why that is. Have your students put their devices on the table or on the floor. It can take several reminders, verbal and nonverbal, with particularly recalcitrant students. And I've had to do this when I use this setup. Remind students to put their phones or devices down many times. All right, field of view and barriers. Well, the field of view is other students and whatever is on the table. So keep that in mind. Because of that, you may want to move cell phone stack off to the side if it's particularly distracting. All right, I'm going to stop talking for just a minute and show a couple of classrooms that I hope that you'll take a minute and evaluate. Ask yourself the questions that we've been talking about throughout this lesson. How does this setup support the activities we're doing today? How does this setup influence the behavior of students? How does this setup influence the behavior of instructors? What is largest in a student's field of view? What barriers can be removed to improve classroom dynamics? Think about these questions. Think about an upcoming lesson you've got as you look at these images and try to think about how you might alter the setup to support the activities that are in an upcoming lesson of your own. All right, so what are my top picks and recommendations for classroom setup? Well, if you're showing a videos or you're gonna be using a chalkboard, I recommend a U-shape or a rainbow. If you're trying to encourage group discussion, I recommend U-shape or the steep V classroom setup. If you're trying to discourage unwanted cell phone behaviors, I recommend tiny boardroom or gauntlet. If your lesson is going to be primary primarily lecture, or you're trying to silence overly talkative students, I recommend ladder. Hopefully this has been a helpful discussion for you and you've learned some things about classroom setup that will be help, help, helpful for you. <laughs> Take a look at my other videos. I've got lots and lots of suggestions on how to handle cell phone misuse in the classroom. Teacher's guide that's going to teach you lots of ways to incorporate cell phones more seamlessly into your classroom and also a great video on how to make decisions about whether or not to ban a cell phone in your classroom using research, and also how to develop a cell phone policy that students may actually follow. Thanks again for listening.